Welcome to No Prize Podcast. I am the professor. That's Johnny. That's Lucas. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. You're more than welcome. As always. We have a heavy show to get through, so... We do, we do. Uh, yeah, we're going to uh, maybe take a little bit of a turn because there's a couple of heavy subjects that have been cropping up over the last couple of weeks that we want to talk about. Um, do we want do, do we want to get into that stuff before we get into the Disney Plus and X-Men and comics? Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. Yeah. let's yeah, jump yeah, yeah. in. Yeah. Which one would, would, let's, 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 let's give a... I do want to give a tribute to Ed Pisker. Um, you know, hip hop family. He also did other his own little own projects, Red Room, which was actually pretty good. Um, I'm surprised it didn't get more accolades. Um, and a bunch of other Marvel little projects and stuff. And it's it's very very sad because of the way it went down. Mm-hmm. Um, so a young lady who had been uh, messaging back and forth with him back when she was kind of like 16. Uh, she recently brought to light the fact that this guy that Ed was, you know, talking with her and she goes and and the only and I, and I was let me say this because of the, the environment we're in right now. Otherwise, th- that's what happened. Otherwise, this wouldn't even, even even been a thing because in between this new documentary on Nickelodeon, um, what do you call it? It's called the quite quite on set. Um, mm. The the new TikTok age where they are definitely calling out the fact that Grooming is a thing, and the way groomers do that thing. So now that it's kind of bubbling in people's mind, those messages from way back in the day is kind of freaking bubbling up. So she brought it to light, and then all of a sudden, all these other people were talking about how he was interacting with them, and it, and it just got to be too much. And that's, that's just one thing, but other people, to include people in the industry, started pulling back from him, and he was supposed to have an exhibit in Pittsburgh. They said, nah, we're going to have to postpone until we figure out what's going on. There was rumors about other products being freaking canceled, and it was just a freaking whole mess. Not mm-hmm. to mention that other people in our own industry, in our own little community, were just piling on without actually even reading the messages of what she said. Um, so as a result, you know, man who was already in a bad spot in a bad space in a bad headspace decided to you know end this life sadly uh, i don't know our, our regrets and our prayers go out to the family but what do you guys think i mean because this is not this 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 is this is not just ed there's other people in our community that, that's going through the same thing what, what do we think what do you guys think johnny this uh, is your this is your life right i mean this is what you do and in, in what, what we're what, help people? Yeah, you help, help people, people, right? I do what I do help people. It's my day job. Um, I'm a I'm a designated safeguard lead, which means that should someone <clears throat> present themselves to be vulnerable, that I will help them find the, the 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 help and support that they need to get through whatever storm is raging at their front door. Yeah. Um, it's tragic that someone took their life over comments that were made um years back it's tragic that the court of a public opinion has applied a societal norm from now retroactively and said well hold on a second it's i'm not for one minute blaming the young lady in question or the young ladies in question <clears throat> i'm not i'm not i'm not blaming anyone um other than the fact that um all right. Okay. So he nowadays now. So back in the day when I was a kid, um, on a Sunday, my my father would go to the, the pub, come back, cause holy hell because he'd be a little bit tipsy. Throw Sunday dinner around the place. Go to bed, sleep it off. Go get up. Go again at six o'clock down the pub. Have a couple of pints. Come back, bit rowdy, and you know, smack my mum around, smack the kids around, and stuff like that. Now nowadays, nowadays that that borders on child abuse, isn't it? And it's correct that it does. Mm. Um. You don't see me looking to get retroactive compensation for something that happened um, 40 years ago, 50, 45 years ago. Mm. Now, where does the line stop? That's the question. It is heartbreaking to see a creative talent or anybody take their own life because they're pressured by the court of public opinion. Does it really matter what people say on Facebook? Does it really matter what people say on Twitter? The people that are involved know their intent of of the messages to know the intent of the 
of the conversations and the situations. Um, I don't know. It, uh, I don't know. I don't have enough knowledge about the situation from Edge. Was it an innocent conversation? I don't know enough about her. Was she looking to, to have some adult fun? I don't know any of that, and I can't. And I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sign any sort of context to it, other than the fact that it's not yeah. a opinion, man. Yeah. Well, I, you know, um, it's it's tough to it's tough to even try to have a, a an opinion rather than even a strong opinion, mm. um, because I, I mean, we're all. I mean, this 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 whole show comes mm. out through social media. Everybody's we're all looking for likes and subscribers and clicks and and for people to listen to what we say and and to give us credibility and that's really the that's that's really where all this is coming from and and it, what it has created over these over the years is that the, these people are feel, feel empowered and have this ability to just say whatever they want to whoever about whatever and their <laughs> opinions get so strong and uh and and i don't even know if the people even believe half the stuff that they that they write because uh, you, the, you wouldn't, you wouldn't say like I wouldn't say to the person on the street half the stuff you read on the internet. Agreed. And and it's unbelievable to me because you're absolutely right. You don't want to be blaming the women that had come forward. I, I don't blame anyone. Right. Don't blame the women because, but it, it's societal rules that say, oh well, we wouldn't accept this now. So we shouldn't have accepted it, God knows when. And right. I, I just want to. I just want to kind of pull up on something you said. Um, I don't do this show for public opinion. Well, I don't do, it, I don't do all. And time neither do I. I. I do it because I, I have fun. fun. Exactly. Yeah. And my brother, um, I, you guys know I like to doodle, right? So I, yeah. I, I draw a picture. I show my brother. Do you like this art? And my brother turned around and said, "What's it matter what I like? Do, do you enjoy doing it?" I was like, "Yeah, I did." I said, "Well, then that's it. Job's done." And right. that's exactly how I view social media. I don't particularly care if I've got 2,000 uh, followers on Twitter. I don't care if I've got 10. I'm yeah. now having a blast doing what I like to do. Um, and, th and that's kind of how it works. I don't, I don't do any of this stuff for, for any sort of notoriety or well, notoriety, I should say. I, 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 and, and I just, you know, and trying to, trying to read and, and, yeah. and, and, and catch up on like, on, on exactly everything that happened. Um, it was, it's tough to you cause you never want to, um, to belittle anyone that's coming forward and, and saying mm -hmm. something that they, they feel like they were wronged, but then you can you look at the other side and you're like okay if, even if all this stuff happened where was the real crime rather than uh mm -hmm. maybe a maybe a kind of like a creepy type type of thing you know kind of give you some vibes um but there was no there was nothing here that should have cost this person his job his livelihood his career his you know, and that's and that's where I kind of feel like social media has maybe gotten a little bit out of control mm. with cancel culture, and um, and to the point where 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 Mr. Pisker here feels like he like he had to take his life, and I'm not I'm not putting and I'm not trying to blame anyone that was that was doing this to him for his, what his, what he did mm. to himself, because um, I don't I, I mean. It's this is a tragedy, I think, all around. Um, I mean, it's 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 a fact that the majority of people who take their own lives don't actually see that as an outcome. People who yeah. people who take who commit suicide, they're trying to run away from something, and all of their problems are some things even. So in yeah. in Ed's case, it's a case of he's no matter where he turns, he's not getting any respite from this. Yeah. It's like, he's, he's, as you mentioned, his art gig got cancelled at, at the museum. Yeah. Um, he's getting his artists and writers that he's worked with are distancing himself, themselves yeah. from him. Yeah. For, these are long term partners. Yeah. Then you go on the social media and you can't even check out the, the baseball scores without him quit his, his name coming up in the hey, you know, re recent tweets about, yeah. you know, so it's, it's, 
you know, cool. the, and, and the pressure, and of course, the vilification that goes with this. And um, we are, and, and, and the, 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 and I, again, I reiterate, I am not laying blame at anybody, but the amount of times when something has said to have happened and it destroys a life and then comes to light that, oh, actually, you know, it didn't happen. It was recently, there was a, a football star, was it Alabama receiver, who was doing fantastic and then gets accused of rape, uh, ends up spending, takes some bad advice from a lawyer, ends up spending 10 years in prison, gets out of prison and said, oh, by the way, you know what? Yeah, someone else has come out to back your story. So, yeah, sorry, we got it wrong. That's, yeah. you know, and there's no, see, there's no... no retribution for that young individual other than the fact that now he's going yeah. to, I think, I think he's out with Atlanta. I think he's with Atlanta. Yeah. Do, doing, trying to get under the squad and stuff. But it's hard. It's hard when you've got that, that sense of social, social injustice. Yeah. It's like, oh. as I said earlier, we don't know enough about, Ed, was he was he looking was he looking for some fun? Was she looking for some fun? Did they just not connect? And she thought thought it was a bit bit strange. Yeah. And then he, she's backed away from it, and then forgot about it, or not dealt anything with it until society changes and there's oh actually this is a problem. Oh well, this happened to me, and then and that kind of brings up again. I'm not saying if there is anything untoward with what Ed did that yeah. he shouldn't be. Um, there needs to, for me there needs to be some sort of common sense approach it's, it's like there's no there's no reparation for some of the horrible things that humans have done in yep. history and yep. and yet we still we still castigate people as i said in the court of social media I, you know, the, I keep I keep coming back to the point that you know twenty twenty years ago or even ten years ago, uh, something like this, you know, I would I would look at in passing and be like, wow, that's none of my business. Mm. That's none of my business. But everything now seems to be like, well, this is our business, and mm. um, we should say something, you know. But um, for me, it just comes down to, I mean, I, I've met enough comic book creators in my time to know that it's a very fragile community, you know, Creator, it's a, yeah. it, it, they're, they're people, so many of them um, that I know are basically uh, the shut-ins, the, 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 the pandemic that happened to a few years ago, um, yeah. that didn't affect them much at all because yeah. they're all, they all live in their houses and don't come out anyway, <laughs> 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 you know, and that's, and, and even, and, and I, and I read all of the, uh, I read Ed Pesco's Suicide Note, which is so, so um, upsetting to me reading it personally. Um, but he even said in there, he's like, he's like, I'm the only one that can get in trouble never leaving the house you know mm -hmm. and to me that was i was like that's that could be that could be any of these creators mm -hmm. right so it, it just it resonated to me um his the the, the depth of his uh despair really mm -hmm. at losing everything um but uh you know but looking at you know of course i went down the rabbit hole too and trying to find like all the other people involved in this and of course everybody else's socials all shut off so <laughs> you know it wasn't it was it's not easy to actually figure out what happened now at this point anyway so yeah. um but there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there saying a, a lot of stuff and so a lot of a lot of just vile mm. things that the people are just saying um on both sides and it's uh it's it's one it's of crazy. those things that i'm like can't we learn from can't we learn from this instead mm. of getting worse and that's what i think people are getting is is just uh is worse um mm. so yeah. that's that's to me is is when does when does it when do we learn when do we learn and i don't think we will ever will really right so uh okay but well, it, let's uh let's move on to the uh next <laughs> <laughs> well done, lucas it's, that was a conversation Kara. well done, uh, well done. No, <laughs> and we, you, know, you know what we we needed to move on from that because yeah. I mean, like i said we could have oh, yeah, yeah. we could have talked about that for the whole hour and yeah. i'm sure we all three of us had um, it. i mean my last comment on the whole subject is ed pisker is not the only creator male or female who has had allegations 
Oh, yeah. And, that, and I just want to point out, it's not just comic book creators. There'll be baseball players, football players, uh, regular Joes and doing regular jobs, you know. Yeah, right. But at this stage, they are allegations. So kind of, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> Next on the allegation list. <laughs> well, actually, this isn't an, alle- this isn't an allegation. If, yeah. you, oh. if you type in Google right now, who created Wolverine? Lucas, take it away. <laughs> if you take type in Google <laughs> who created so this is absolutely crazy. So Roy Thomas, who apparently was an editor um for Wolverine, is now getting uh credit as a co-creator. This is fascinating to me because this this made it to Forbes. This is not just our little inter-community mm-hmm. freaking nerd guys freaking talk about it. This is Forbes talking about this. Hey, I'm not a nerd, I'm a geek. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be, mis- um, be misappropriating my fandom. Oh my god! <laughs> Where's social media? I must talk about this. <laughs> you know, and uh, so apparently Roy Thomas spoke out about it and everything. I-, I didn't necessarily read what he had to say, but what do you guys think about this? Should editors no be credited? Because because all that all the editors guys are supposed to do is you know check the grammatical stuff, check the periods, make sure the panels are in the right spots and everything, and then figure you have. And then send that off to, to the uh, to the printer and everything. No, nope. what do you guys think? No, nope. I'm a, I'm a hell no on this one. <laughs> I, I I cannot believe I I, I put this in our chat in the prep for the show, and I yeah. cannot believe this is a thing. I cracked a joke in there. What's next? The guy who uh, put the staples in the books gets a co-creator. The guy who pressed the go button on the print machine does he get the Xerox or or H and P get a co-creator because they use them on their machines? Where does this stop? The co-creator it is just absolutely it is the writer, potentially the artist. It is those are the people that create the character. Did Roy Thomas create this character? No. Did Roy Thomas create the vision? Eh, maybe, but he's just repurposed the previous character. I'm not disputing Roy Thomas's work as a comic book no. writer. He is an absolute machine. Pardon the pun. When it, in like the 70s and his fake fake stanley style and movie stuff over on dc all that good stuff it helped save marvel with bringing star wars into the fold did roy thomas create star wars i'm sure george lucas has something to say about that i'm sure because roy thomas was an editor on that book so therefore he must be yeah um so no no roy thomas if roy thomas had a shred of um integrity and not think about the bank balance. I'm sure of which is probably not nothing coming his way for retribution of this. I think he would distance himself from this and say, I had nothing to do with the co-creation of, uh, of Wolverine. I, it, so it, is just, it was just another book and he should do that and he should put this to rest and shouldn't dis- use it to disparage the creation of other things. Where did it stop though? This is the thing. because. I, I, do you remember a few few years ago, I got into a I got into an argument in our chat room with one of our guys who no longer contributes to Crusaders, because he said Chris Claremont created Wolverine. I'm like Chris Claremont didn't create Wolverine at all. Chris, mm-hmm. he had nothing to do with. It. Yeah, but he made him he made him the character that he is. Uh, right, okay. So does that mean Stanley created Captain America? Because it was Stanley that put him in the Avengers. No, to take to give credit to somebody else. Who had nothing to do with the creation of it and was just there at the time disparages and demeans the work of the true creators in this instance. Yeah. And I'm and I'm absolutely flabbergasted that someone who I thought was quite um quite a, an honest and robust person has allowed this idiot idiocy to go on with this. Okay. So, so- Go ahead, Lucas. Go ahead, Professor. So, no, uh, no, no, I have a lot to say. Okay, okay. So, Roy Thomas, Roy Thomas spoke like to Forbes by phone to give his perspective on the situation. He says, uh, "Such an equation is unfortunate. He's trying to. It's only trying to get finally get credit for something where the facts have been known for many years." Um, you know, he's saying it's not a financial issue. They're, he's only trying to get acknowledgement when the movie comes out. You know, of like as a partial creator. Um, what he's receiving is formal acknowledgement from Marvel Studios of his role in the process, something known less explicity in the creator thanks, credits, and the previous phone, uh, 
films like Logan. Uh, he explained that as an editor in chief of Marvel in 1974, he first conceived of developing a Canadian character to include in the comics to broaden the appeal. And we had an international readership, and I had created international characters like Banshee and Sunfire before. Um, and he said, I have four requirements for the character that he be named Wolverine, be Canadian, be fierce because Wolverines are fierce creatures, and that be short because superheroes are usually tall. So he's saying that he actually created it. The, the things that he's saying, he's saying that he created it. Because you're talking about, hey, I need a Canadian guy that's name freak, that's name freaking Wolverine, and then he's got to be freaking fierce. And then the other piece comes from like Foom. <coughs> I, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to jump in the, in the steel professor's thunder on this. But don't you find it ironic that the only people who could say yay or nay on this are, are dead. dead? Yes. So, to be fair, it's like one guy shouting in the wind and nobody shouting back. And he who shouts loudest must be right. Must be right. Must be right because right, I'm loud. Really? So here's. Here's Sorry, my here, no Sorry, here, here's here's my that. argument and and Johnny you did mention what I was uh, I was going to bring up um <laughs> no one no 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 one no one can dispute this because everybody else is dead uh so uh, so in uh, in one point um this is all very poor taste um mm -hmm. uh, to to be coming out uh way way after the fact when Len Wein and Herb Trimpey um can no longer uh dispute. Uh, literally yeah. anything um Family, how, no however one. no and however I, I i will say no one's really disputing roy's contributions to the character anyway um you know it's it is ben will ben well documented that uh len ween has said that roy thomas came to him and said create uh i need you to create this superhero um he, he want and i uh, call him wolverine and he's going to be Canadian. i'm not disputing that that i'm that there's been several reports that that happened several interviews where where len ween has actually literally said that um we know that uh herb trimpey even even though he's the one that uh, that 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 drew wolverine for the first time and was the first one that drew him in the comic book we know that john ramita senior had co-creating credit in the creating his look so the you know wolverine was really a created created by committee and i i had never really disputed that roy thomas had a hand in the creation of wolverine and and many many other characters for marvel over the years that he well deserves credit for this is particularly uh, a sticking point because at the point where wolverine was created roy thomas was the editor-in-chief of marvel and at that point roy's collecting a paycheck and if you read anything from any creator in marvel and this has been an overwhelming majority from a lot of the 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 biggest creators that worked at marvel at the time and worked over the years editors don't take credit for the creations it's the writers and the artists and the editors input to these said characters it's their effing job to do so it's their job for to work for marvel to make these characters the most marketable sellable uh things they can do and they get compensated for that they get paid so they don't get creative credit and it's in bad taste for them to try to take it um no matter how much input they may have had on the characters there's a, there's plenty of stories out there where you can basically say some of these characters like for dc that just came out of the mouth of julia schwartz right but with julia mm. schwartz never took credit for any of these characters yeah. like bringing back the flash or bringing yeah, back green the Lantern. justice league yeah. or green later and we know we know that it's it, the, these 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 people are just are, are are hired to do a job yeah. So then, so then I got I, I got a question, and I'll show you this. This was from Foom issue yeah. number two. So Foom number one, they had asked for you know everybody's ideas for a superhero, and Foom number two, Andy Olson, this guy named Andy Olson, had submitted this. Um, it, the guy, the character's name was Wolverine, and the powers abilities is that he appears to have some type of cyborg possessing mechanical organs and still hitting us underneath his his skin. Um, any powers this Wolverine had are largely unreal and speculative, blah, 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 da, da, da. So how come 
Mr. Roy Thomas is going to get credit, but Andy Olsen is not going to get any credit. Now 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 we get now we're getting somewhere. So (laughs) does the guy who created the black and white Spider-Man suit story that Jim Shooter bought it off him so he could be put into Marvel? Does that guy get credit? Because it was his idea. It but should. he's Jim Shooter bought it, so therefore, do you lose it when someone buys it? It's ah, uh, see now, now. See that, just, that and that yeah. that was the that was that was the thing about Superman. I forget the name of the creators. Um, that was their whole thing because they sold it for two hundred fifty bucks. Single yeah, they sold it for two hundred fifty bucks, and it took them years yeah. to get back that credit. This this That's is the no this is this is where we're going down the rabbit hole here because <laughs> I mean we could do we could argue about this stuff all day. Uh, I don't so here I don't think anybody gets credit for picking um, picking a name for a character, right? Because anybody can pick up a dictionary and turn to page seven hundred and seventy three and pick oh. a cool sounding name out of a dictionary and say that's my character uh, you say. Hmm. yeah so so that's a great name <laughs> yeah so uh, you know that doesn't really hold water with me this one with uh, the you know the 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 kind of metal skin this guy this one this character actually looks more like deathlock than anything to me but uh, i i mean when you when you draw a picture and send it in to a magazine and and uh, and hope and pray that it gets published and used, uh, you know you, you're not you're not really looking to get any kind of creator credit if they use your idea, right? I mean, you put you you mailed this in. There's a, so who's this? What's this guy's name? Andy Andy, Andy Olson. Olson. Yeah. Uh, you, you know this guy was probably what thirteen sent this in 14 whatever i and i'm not sure i don't know but you know he just said he just thought it was cool to do doodle and send it in and see if it got published this and 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 there's a plenty of stories out there about uh about characters being swiped and Nathan, like story ideas being swiped roy thomas has a ton of them for his sending in his own ideas to julius schwartz for uh for a ton of silver age stories that that got picked up that never got credit for so so i i just uh you know i don't know where it is where it starts where it ends you know everybody gets their ideas from somewhere Mm. so you know that's to me to me the way i look at it is if andy olsen decided to sue marvel and brought this into a court of law with him would he get anywhere no yes i think so because of the the, public the the the, the court of public opinion no, I'm not, I mean, I mean an actual court. No, I agree, but so. then Marvel would bend over backwards to avoid. Yeah. Them, but so. but even though the court of public opinion, uh, this has never really this story has never <laughs> really gone farther than us talking about it on social media. There's not, you know, there's there's no big newspaper article saying, you know, c- kid creates Wolverine six months before he appears in the comic. No one ever has written that story. So, you know, to me, yeah, comic crusaders needs to write it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sensing an article. <laughs> yeah, so, so anyway, I, so I think we're all the same opinion, right? I mean, uh, Roy Thomas is, I, and, and let me bring this up because, um, yes, I think it's, I think it's shameful to be able to to come at, to come out of the woodwork, fifty years after the fact, to um, to try to cr- claim co-creator mm-hmm. we we know what your contribution was to the character roy but the credit belongs solely with the writers and the artists of the book he, he's my he's my final thought the machine's final thought um the x-men movie x-men x-men 2 x3 uh there's a future past logan the first wolverine movie um age of apocalypse what's that six seven movies yeah Six, seven movies. Where has he been? Doesn't say anything because yeah. the other people are alive. Now that they're not around there to, to argue with him and there's a new movie coming out this year, now's the time to start making waves. Yep. Really, Roy? Aren't you better than that, Roy? Aren't you? Well, and, and, and let's uh, let's call out you know his his uh his his agent uh john Cimino too because jo- this this is a pure john Cimino concoction who's mm-hmm. actually uh, you know i i mean on some level respect because he's doing his job 
for his client and keeping his name out there and trying to get him everything he can. Uh, to that point, I think he's doing his job. Uh, however, uh, as far as reading the room is concerned, not very good at it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, you got to the community. It's a it's a tight community. <laughs> You know, everybody knows how everybody's supposed to be doing. He that was a that was a a social media firestorm he created a couple of weeks ago with this. So, um, you know, good luck dealing with the with the the, the output and 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 anything that you know. John Cimino's trying to make Roy Thomas a buck, and I don't blame him. But um, but you're not you're burning bridges. So mm, yes. But uh, anyhow, all right. Uh, I guess let's take a quick break, right? Uh, and yes. then we'll come back and we'll actually start talking some uh, some actual stuff. All right, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's catch up this uh, crisis in the toilets. Make sure to check out Crisis on the Toyverse and all about our favorite toys and, and everything coming out. It's one of my favorite things. I had I had a crisis in my Toyverse. I ordered the Batman uh, and Robin Batgirl from this company in the UK, and I got a phone call on Friday to say, I'm sorry, Mr. Hughes, uh, your parcels, it's the wrong one. So the person has rang in to say they've received your Batgirl. We're very sorry. You're going to receive Masters of the Universe Leonardo. But hey, ah! don't worry, as a goodwill gesture, you can keep the figure. What do I want the figure for? You numpties. So, <laughs> Monday is back to the All right. All right. Hey, so X Men 97, we have a couple of more episodes to talk about. Um, this is, I, I think I said this last time, this has been a kind of nice trip down memory lane here as far as some of the storylines and everything like revisited. Um, I know the last episode was uh, Mojo Verse and yes. uh, and uh, and Life Death. That's, so that was an interesting. It was like kind of a split episode, wasn't it? It was kind of like half one, half the other, right? Yeah, I I think I've only watched the first half of the last episode so far. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm tracking Mojo Universe. It was really good. It had really good dialogue. It uh, it it was kind of with Jubilee and Sunspot and. The, the whole big thing, the contact that they were trying to give you was like, hey, because um, Jubilee, she just turned 18, which is weird that they decided to do that, do that because I always remember her as being 16, 17, even though she's probably like 30 in the comics now. Um, they were like, hey, even though you want to go back and you just want to go back to a simpler time for yourself, you, you can't, right? Some of that stuff is lost, and sometimes you got to grow forward and, and grow. And that was kind of the G.I. Joe, the more you know, speaking type of message that was, that was supposed to be there. Um, the and, and, and I felt that was, like, well-written. I thought I thought that was good. Um, I didn't see the the second half of the, the report that you guys are talking about. Mm-hmm. What happened in there? Well, that was the life-death story, the uh, Forge and, uh, and Storm and uh okay. st- like storm adjusting to life without powers and forge wanting to restore her powers to her so it was the first part of it and so they're actually going to get the second part this coming week but uh that's uh that's where i kind of feel like this i mean this this whole uh this whole season is a tribute to claremont's work on on the x-men um, a lot of a lot of classic storylines that they're adapting. Um, episode three, if we go back, was the whole Jean Grey, Madeline Pryor, Mister Sinister, Goblin Queen, Inferno uh, episode, which uh, which was was a lot to 
get through and i think they might have dropped the ball on that episode yes. because there was just so much that they couldn't really explain everything and so everything happened so quick with um the minute madeline Pryor showed up at the door or gene gray showed up at the door everybody turned on on the gene gray that they've been with the mother of scott's child everybody was like oh you're a clone get the hell out of here um and that was that was where i kind of think was really quick and and if you didn't have if you didn't take the x-men primer class you would have no clue what the heck was, was going, going on. on and um because because then uh madeline Pryor instantly turned the goblin queen uh instantly uh aligned herself with mr sinister and then had that whole that whole episode and it was a lot of chaos going on yeah. and that should that should have been an hour and a half minimum type yeah. freaking episode because first you got to freaking they they tried to get us you know to get us into the whole madam prior and and feel for her but no you just went to, went from her being pregnant like, like you're saying, went for us from being pregnant to turning on her to doing all this other stuff. Yeah. I am I, I do I like the fact that they bring brought the Goblin Queen in? Absolutely. I like the fact that they brought Madame Pryor if did the thing. But you gotta take it slow so that we're are we are at mostly attached to the person and then go, Oh crap, that's not the mm. person who we thought thought it was. Um mm. and then, you know, even even the birth, the birth of <laughs> look, a birth on screen is supposed to be a big thing. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a big thing where we're like, oh man, this is amazing. This is freaking awesome. A new bird. No, it was it was just it was just there and it was quick. It, they literally came out of like a dream sequence into this whole freaking birth, and it was like, okay, baby's here. The heck? <laughs> uh, and and you know, Scott and the emotions of Scott towards Madeline and his and his wife. That's supposed to be a lot messier. They, well, he doesn't. He still doesn't look good in this uh, in that third episode because he goes from uh, literally in the same scene. Uh, I'm not going to uh, abandon my child, uh, and to the, the, the and he next, walks away. Next line, <laughs> can't stay here for this. <laughs> so I, I I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but you're right. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of nuance that gets missed in a 30 minute show um that that uh, you know one of my thoughts and i've been thinking this for a while is you know why why are we going uh this the 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 big screen route with x-men fantastic four when you have an outlet like disney plus where you could do kind of like a primer show like that that would build up to a movie like you could you could do a, a, an X Men show like maybe a, a season or two that focuses on all the individual characters, much like you did in, uh, in the MCU the first few years where you, everybody was getting solo movies. But now you have Disney Plus. You could give people solo shows and then bring them together as the X Men, and that yes. that to me would be um, that would be a way to I think get people in and, and maybe well, Johnny, would you feel like that would just that would dilute the product? Um. <clears throat> A couple of things. I think the pacing of the show is absolutely bonkers. I agree. The Madeline Pryor episode should have been at least two episodes. And yep. then you follow it up with the Jubilee and Storm one. And again, there's a Jubilee, Jubilee idea. But bearing in mind, I hate Mojo. So you're always on a loser with me from that one. If that, if that story is not enough to last 20 minutes, why are you trying to pigeonhole Storm and Forge it and get that going? When really that in itself needs two episodes as well. Yeah. Oh, I don't feel that Storm loves Forge or Forge loves Storm at this point. And that yeah. was the big betrayal in the in the comic book is that yep. Storm finds a kindred spirit. She's all happy. She's at peace with no powers. She's okay. And then she finds out that Forge created the machine, the, the gun that took it away, took her powers away. And that's the thing that tears them apart and then yep. keeps them apart forever. None of that is in, you're absolutely right, the nuance is missed. The other thing that I really knocks me about this and this goes all the way back to the original x-men cartoon the first time around is that it, practically 99 percent of the episodes are based on comic books i've already read i know how madeline pry is going to end i know mojo what he's about i know how forge and storm are going to go i know all this already there is no incentive for me a long-term fan to watch this cartoon show other than nostalgia because mm -hmm. there's not there's nothing new in it at least in the batman the animated series the original bruce tim paul dinney one yes they had the episodes that were based on 
comic books, but we also had new, new, new storylines in there. The Batman with Reno Romano again yeah. had new storylines, new characters thrown into the mix. It's still Batman, even the bloody the animated one. Beware, beware the Batman that had new stuff in, and it can work with new new ideas. You talk about yeah. you talk about a show that's based on ninety seven, based in ninety seven, and then you're also running the stories from that long ago. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Come on. Can we not have yeah. something new, please? Yeah, I would like I would like something new based in that ninety seven universe, but 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 new. You're right. Um, but they like I said, I as for the nostalgia purposes of of them doing adapting Chris Claremont stories, uh so to speak. I like it, but if that's what it is. It's an adaptation. It's not new. So it bugs me when DC movies come out and say new original animated movie. I'm like, oh, excellent. What is it? Hush. All right. I'm sure I've read that somewhere. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was speaking to Paul Cannell on outside the panels this week and um, it's live now. Go and check it out. Um, and he, we talk about nostalgia and he said that back in the day, day nostalgia was considered a disease. And then people coming back from wars would suffer it as a kind of like what we've classed now as post traumatic yeah. post stress tra- uh, PTSD, yeah, post traumatic yeah. stress, yeah, yeah post traumatic stress disorder. People miss what they've had and it affects them in a mental health kind of way. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that X Men 97 is a mental health exercise, but I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that we call that you this show lives on our coattails of us being okay with that and yeah. and nowadays 97 well what so what's that three 20, 27 years ago yeah my viewing tastes have changed in 27 years mm-hmm. yeah so that's that's uh that's where nostalgia it's almost um bittersweet for me really mm. it's uh it's I, I like seeing it because it reminds me of the days when i used to like this <laughs> and now i don't like it as much because i'm older and my tastes have changed uh, it's funny because it's nice I'm, to see yeah well it's like i'm watching i'm watching batman the animated series on prime i've not gone back and watched x-men 97 i've not gone back and watched the spider-man cartoon at the same time I, I actually told my son because he was I guess he read something he's like you must state that you must watch the X-Men the animated series before you watch X-Men 97 and I said no you didn't no you don't you read the comics right and he's like yeah I read the comics then you don't need to watch the TV the cartoon just yeah. start at this start at this yeah. one so yeah. cool. you'll, you'll catch up quick so but anyway all right uh let's let's pivot from uh from Disney plus um we actually get some let's comics. Go. Yeah, gods. Let's, yeah, gods. let's talk. It's let's talk some six. gods. And this, you know, I actually uh, <laughs> so, someone from one of my uh, one of my forums. Let me shout. I shout out um, Avengers Forever on it's a, a Facebook forum. Um, one of one of the uh, one of the people on Avengers Forever that listens to our podcast requested that we that we review gods because okay. um, we haven't talked about it. We did talk about the first issue, but we haven't talked anything since. Well, on your head be it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I so, well, go ahead. Yeah. You, you I mean, can go ahead, Lucas. Well, we, you guys got to do the credits first. Uh, all right, I've got them here. Hang on, two secs. Let me get there. Uh, so, Jonathan Hickman as the writer, Valerio yeah. Shitty as the artist, uh, mm-hmm. Marte Gracia. Uh, Garcia, that's weird. Garcia, not Garcia. Garcia Gracia. as a color art. Uh, VC is Travis Lanham as letterer. Matias Menahini, great freaking cover art. I, I love it. Then you've got variant cover artist Mark Brooks, Rodney's Rodney, Stephanie Hans actually pitched in a pretty good uh, one. And then let's let's give credit to the editor since that's what uh, we're doing nowadays. Tom Brevo- uh, Brevoort and editor in chief CB Simulaski. Does should um, he get should he get co-creator credit? F it, why not? Yeah. We're giving co-creator to get everybody. So I mean, that's 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 the thing. If you had already had the i, I'm not saying it's right, but if you had the idea and say, hey, writer, I had this idea, make it come to come to life. Should you have some type of creative credit? Not if it's your job and you're getting paid to give someone an idea and you're not doing anything else with it. Maybe you help develop it. You don't you if you're getting paid this is this is my philosophy you don't get credit if you're getting a paycheck uh because that's your job so 
uh, to me. It's it, it, it's the writer that wrote it, the artist that drew it, and you you if you're steering the ship, you're not you're and, not getting credit then, for being the pilot. Then then we need to take the Stephen King off of the Stephen King's name off a whole bunch of books. Then that's that's, well, the, that's the way he works. Putting Stephen King's name on there to sell. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, man. So guys, we've been working on this on these characters for what since july of 2023 they've been the thing mm-hmm. or actually might have been march of 2023 that's when they were in that free comic book day and there's the power of our powers to be and the nature of all things and we were kind of we, we, we kind of understand that they have powers but we don't really didn't really understand like where they were and the nature of things were they like actual gods were they entities? Were they just superheroes? And I guess this is what this book was supposed to solidify is that they have access to the entities like the Living Tribunal. Um, and they have access to the host that can take them there, um, but they're still not that actual gods yet. That's that's where it sits, sits for me. Um, there is a whole thing where from the previous issue, um, one of the uh, I guess you would call it trainees, whatever, lost the powers as a result of something that Wynn did. And now she's trying to get it back, but then she's got to do this whole puzzle thing, and she's got to, you know, sacrifice stuff and go through these trials in order to get the Living Tribunal to, to hear her out and everything. And, you know, I, I guess that's fine. That's where this book is. That's, that's the only thing of significance that happened for me. And it's like, okay, now you're really losing losing your your audience because god's one fine but slowly but surely nobody else other than us is talking about this book right now because we're still not sure what did you guys think go ahead johnny i'll go because i I think mine's quite quick actually on this one um it looks great it looks looks fabulous The, the lady in question is gorge uh, it reads like a tomb draped in gravitas, where every word is so, so important. But unfortunately, like so much of Hickman's writing, it promises much, yet fails to deliver. In fact, other than losing a couple of eyes, everything is as it was at the start. Congratulations. We are in Hickman pacing hell. All right. So... There's a panel by which the character has to make a choice between the things. And that's interesting. I'm like, oh, that's an interesting thing. But do we get to see all the other choices? No. We get it in little dialogue boxes and just tell, not sure. It's like, exactly. It's, that's annoying as hell to It's me. a coming. That's the most interesting part in this book. The choices the character has to make. I genuinely don't care about the character. I don't care about the maid. She's on the wrong side of the fence. And they're trying to sort it so she goes on the right side of the fence so that she can live up to her potential. None of that absolutely matters to me. These characters, if they try to retcon into the Marvel Universe, <laughs> where the hell have they been in all the major events? Who knows? Who cares? It's just an ego trip. Whatever. Um, Twisted turns of fate. Yeah, build on it. Let's do something with it. But no, it's just the interesting part gets gets pushed aside for, for an exercise in art and trying to be cleverer than you think you are. Um, they use the X font for some reason. Is this an X Men book? I have no idea. But hey, at least it looks good. Mm. And uh, to Professor's friend who wanted to look at this book, I did warn you when I said, "Be careful what you wish for." <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I actually have been enjoying this series just um, just because you know I mean I I like Hickman generally. I I loved. Uh, I love Powers of X and House of X, right? When 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 the whole Hickman X first started, it's it's when what you said, uh, pacing hell. Mm-hmm. That's that's Hickman, right? Hickman is you know it takes a long time to get to the point, and here um, we're at issue six, and I'm still trying to really kind of figure out what the book's about, and it's de- it's definitely about abstracts and concepts and philosophy and what you actually believe in far as far as as far as gods go what 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 is your religious slant what do you i did chaos order um living tribunal in between all the all these characters i love the concepts and the abstractness of it i love these two new characters the uh, lion of wolves and um this other character i can't remember that her name uh the preordained but, 
Yeah. So these characters are, are interesting to the to the point of they are confusing to me. But I like the um but I like the uh this this issue in particular where um where where Aiko actually has to go to um she's trying to fix the mistake that she made and she's willing to sacrifice of herself to fix that mistake. However, she's she gets tricked into um into giving up something she didn't want to give up. Um, and that to me was interesting, an interesting twist in the book. Um, and, he, and you said, Johnny, like other than her losing her eyes, the, everything was as it was before. That's, that's where I kind of feel like, well, maybe tune in next issue to see the consequences of her decision here. Um, but to me, that's where that's, that should not be the only reason that I tune in to see next issue this is the this is really kind of that pacing like what's going on i like the, i love the looks of the books i love the looks of the characters they're interesting um i know that in the first issue i think maybe we slid too much like why is this why this is, should just be a doctor strange book and um and they've kind of gotten away from that uh I, I like that the characters are their are, are their own. Um, I think Wynn still looks exactly like Doctor Strange, and I got com confused with them in the first issue, but but now these characters are kind of coming into their own. What I really kind of think is that the, the, you know everybody is is writing for the trades these days. Once you get the whole collection, if you go back and read from issue one, it's probably going to make a ton more sense and maybe maybe we revisit this when it's collected and and see the entire story and come to a decision then but right now when you're getting these chapters and we're six months into the story and to get the the details from this one issue and i have to refer back to what's something i read six months ago catch me up <laughs> you know i don't i don't remember so um i think it's i think it's an ambitious project can i put it that way yep okay can I, I I can say that I like it. I can't say that I love it. So Ooh. I'm yeah. just going back to something Johnny the machine said when he says things are returned back to the way they were. They literally got divorced in the first issue, and now they're back again sitting on a bench together, holding hands. Yeah, yeah. So um, we'll they're, they're not getting back together. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's it's interesting, and I don't know how long. It, it, this isn't an ongoing, right? This is a limited series, and I don't know how many issues. It I is. hope to God so. Well, you hope you, it's limited. I don't. I, so. it's, I think it's, it's limited. I think it's limited. I didn't think that twelve. Was... Is it just ten or twelve? I thought. Ah, I thought it was six. I'm not gonna lie. And when yeah. the end day, I was like, yes, it's over. And then the next page was issue seven. I was like, whoa, what more? Yeah, I thought I, I thought when this was announced that it was an, announced as a limited series. And I thought it was, and you know, when when they say limited, I usually think five or six issues now. So I don't know. It's it, it's interesting. And I'm, I'm, I'm willing to see it play out and see what happens. But um, yeah, taking a long time to get to the point. So um, <laughs> sounds like something else we know. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have time for five minute warning? I think we have time to X-Men. Oh, oh, do we want to do X-Men? X -Men? Well, let's do another yes, X-Men book and then we do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Johnny, this is this is your pick. Let's do X-Men. Oh, uh, okay. So this is X-Men 33, written by Jerry Duggan, Joshua Casares on art, Romulo Fajardo Jr. is on colors, VCs Claire and Clouds is on letters. And my it's again dead short review on this one. Is this not over yet? It's like, come on. Really? <laughs> it's the it's fall like, oh, of X. Let's let's battle Orcus and they finally get around to beating Orcus and then lo and behold, there's yet another thing to consider themselves. I'll tell you what, that Moira McTaggart, she knows some stuff, but no, apparently nobody else does. Who the hell are the X Men ever do? I have no idea where these have come from, other than someone says lap the air and I'll slap them. Um Emma looks gorge again. Would will these bodies get changes proportions left, right, and centre? Nice little odd uh, nod back to Dark Phoenix saga where he's hiding in the rafters and dives down at the, at the goons. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch an X-Men cartoon and find out. Um, <laughs> love how Kate saved Shinobi by facing him out of the way of Callisto. Um, I thought it was a... My comments aside, I thought it was a fun little read. Um, I just wish you'd get there sooner. And the annoying thing is when I got to the end of the book, 
and there's a, there's a checklist of where you're at. There's like another eight or nine issues before we get to anywhere near. Before we get to X Men 34, there's another eight or nine issues. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you really, really kidding me? Yeah. Hopefully, with the new X verse around the corner, things will become a little bit more tighter. And Probably not. So, not not so sprawly. But there you go. There you go. Done. Lucas, X Men 33. And so it, there's like what two or three different freaking stories happening here, right? You got uh, yeah. the the Shaw brothers who are, uh, or excuse me, <laughs> Shaw father and son who are kind of manipulating everything that's going on. They're trying to say they're trying to play with Orcus as well as trying to position themselves to you know be with the X Men, depending on who actually freaking wins the whole thing. Um, they decide to send. Uh, some men to uh, where is it, Majapur, in order to hunt down some of the elements of the uh, X Men that are, are still there, along with some Reavers and some Orcs foot soldiers. Um, and then for some reason, Supreme Cap is there. You know, it's it, it, that one was kind of weird because you don't you see him on one panel and then you don't see him again throughout the thing. Um, so as a result, the X Men are getting beaten back. They're trying to do the thing. And another big story, and then uh, so who is it Kamala Khan, who's apparently still with the X Men, calls for help, and she calls on Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom set, sends in his X Men of Doom, for, which is just the first time I'm hearing it because before then they were actually called the Seven Daggers at Laveria, uh, which was like uh, you know a a storm. Clone wanna be then a thing clean uh, clone wanna be no all these other all these all these other characters. Um but I I it's it's all on its own thing. But what I do like about this book on a, on a whole, if you ignore the stuff that they're trying to mix match and put together, is that it feels like um they're trying to put this back on the track, right? Because in Power of X, House of X, what this is all supposed to be is decisions that will ruin ruin and destroy humanity altogether and push us towards becoming this one big machine because we are too reliant on machines and you know we all get dwelled into one big pot and that will be our eventual destruction and that's where they're going going with this and putting this on the track and i do like that it's just the other stuff that got to that decision point was kind of is, is still wonky they need to fix that it and, and, I, and i feel like a lot of x-men Fans are going to be like, okay, that's a thing now. Let let's let's keep it going. What about you, Professor? Uh, so the the one thing that and and uh, I'll agree with Johnny. I thought the book looked great. I thought it was kind of fun to read. But the one the 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 actually a couple of things that I didn't really like when I when I pick up a book when I pick up an X Men book. Um, who's on the team? Is there a team? Is there is there a roster for X Men? Like, like I want to be able to go. Like, if I know I'm picking up an X Men book, I want to be able to know I'm. Uh, is it Cyclops, Wolverine, and uh, and Storm that I'm reading about, or is it? It could be anybody, right? Could um, be anyone. I, I I feel that that's where kind of the book loses its identity a little bit. Um, and when I pick up uh, X Men, I don't want to feel like um, before next month I have to pick up eight or nine or ten other books to understand the story that I'm reading. Um, I want X Men 33. If I picked up X Men 32 and read this and then read this, it should be a continuing story that I kind of seamless and understand what happens, but you don't. You've got X Men 32, it's a totally different story, totally different roster of characters that you're reading. It's almost like an anthology book every month, mm -hmm. and to, to me, um, that's where I think, uh, hopefully, this relaunch next month is gonna, um, hopefully fix that. I want to be able to say if I want to only collect one X Men book, give me one X Men book with one story that I can follow. And if I don't want to follow the other stories, I don't have to. But here, mm -hmm. like I don't want to like I I read this book and I felt like I should go I should go pick up Iron Man, mm. which is weird <laughs> because I shouldn't have to read Iron Man if I want to enjoy X Men. But yeah. <laughs> but but it is what it is. Uh, but so, but I mean, like I, I do agree with Johnny. The story was 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 good. If I was if I was reading it in a vacuum, you know, I thought Kitty Pride was cool. Yeah, um, she's been she's been the best thing out of this. Given the ghost moniker, 
is yeah. the absolute gem yeah. of an idea. Whoever came up with that, I'm sure it was Roy Thomas, must have had a ha. must have had a, a, a brainstorm because that is such. I love how she uses her ninja powers. You forget she's a trained ninja. Yeah, uh, back in the day. So no, yeah. I think I think she's been class. Um, I, I'd like to see more of the, the fire star. I know she was supposed to be the traitor in the myth. I don't know. I uh, that. I've lived and missed that. But, could, um, yeah, find, collect collect the seven other X books this this month to get that story. Um, okay. Don't care about uh, that much. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the X Men of Doom. Uh, I thought I thought it was a great concept because I'm like, well, you know, I'm sure there's mutants in Latveria, right? Mm -hmm. I, the only thing I I just don't know why they're called X Men. So because D Men's a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> they could just have kept kept their uh, their original name. What did you call them? Lucas was the the uh, Seven Daggers of Latveria. That sounds cool. I think kind of kept that right. <laughs> Is the seven of them? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, there was maybe this yeah. Small. I, yeah, I think there was, but maybe some of them got killed off during a little table. <laughs> <laughs> the, the seven daggers, the five daggers, uh, the dagger, the three daggers, <laughs> <laughs> the empty sheet of doom. Jeez. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, I like. I I thought that was cool. All right. Um. Uh. We don't have time for a two minute warning. I mean, unless it's only two minutes. Do you have? Do you have a Let's see. Uh, can... A female ghost writer? Yes. Right. Weird, huh? Hate it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if I can. Do you think? Do you think comic book creators end up just creating their characters based on what they see on cosplayers at cons? Here's the uh, Captain America ghost yeah. writer. Uh, Avengers Blood Hunt, a uh, black costume. And then some uh, Avengers with the Nazis, Blood Hunters, uh, issue number one, Captain Marvel, and I forget who this is as another Ghost Rider, but it's another Stormbreakers, Daredevil number nine, okay. Deadpool number four, one in ten. Uh, this is going to be a second appearance of Death Grip. Saturday morning, Galloway. Uh, freaking <laughs> cover. That's ugly. Yeah, Dracula Blood Hunt number one. Another Dracula cover. Uh, this is a second print for Edge of Spider Verse with Mister Spooky. That's Fantastic stupid. Four, Alex Ross. The Thing, Hildebrandt. You can see his thing in that one. <laughs> hey. <laughs> What's her name? Alicia must be a very happy woman. Uh, giant size yeah. X-Men. But he never disappoints. He's always rock hard, isn't he? <laughs> uh, Shadow of the Green Goblin. Star Wars Death Raider number 46. This is the... Uh, it's not the accomplice. I forget what they're calling these. Student freaking variant. Star Wars The High Republic. One in 25. Ultimate Spider-Man issue number 3. Venom, this one is a 1 of 25. Venom, number 33. Too much. <laughs> yep. Uh, Venom, this is a homage to, I forget the name of the... Uh, Full Symmetry. Craven's Last Hunt. Hunt. Yeah. Uh, Wolverine, David Nakayama, black costume. Here you go, with another saber tooth cover. That's a cable body with a saber tooth head. Yeah. Uh, another Wolverine cover. It went, really went in with these Wolverine covers. Then yours for X Men '97. Then X Men. So what are they doing black costume yeah, variants for everything? The black or oh, the Phoenix black costume one? I quite like that. Uh, uh about this one, that. yes. Yeah, like yeah Idiot Lee. Yeah. And then I follow the House of X for X Men to cover. I think there's going to be a divorce, and that's that's all we have time to show today. All right. Well, a lot of heavy subjects today, guys. I know sometimes all this stuff comes up at once, but uh, 
you know, I think I think we need to address some of this stuff rather than just kind of let it sit. So um, thank you all for joining me for this episode of No Prize Podcast. Please enjoy uh, the next couple of weeks. And um, until then, stay safe. Adios.